Yo, listen up, everyone. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today, we're going to be taking a look at my entire Robin Hobb paperback collection. I've got every Robin Hobb book. However, they're all in the little mass market paperbacks. I don't have any trade paperbacks, don't have any hardcovers. I started buying these in the mass market size, and I've stuck with that size because I like the way they look on the shelf so far. You know, I mean, I got shelves, folks. This is my library. I got shelves full of all kind of books, hardcover, paperbacks, everything. Anyway. I'm going to take a look at a paperback collection this time. Robin Hobb. Let's start at the beginning. We're going to start and we're going to look at each one of her series from the beginning, from in publication order and in the order that I read them, which was in publication order, because every time Robin Hobb would come out with a new book, that's when I would read it in publication order. Let's start with the first book that came out under the Robin Hobb name. For those of you that don't know, Robin Hobb is actually a writer named Megan Lindholm. Megan Lindholm writes under the name Robin Hobb. <clears throat> Megan Lindholm, I happen to know, grew up in Fairbanks, Alaska. If you've listened to my channel, you know I also grew up in Fairbanks, Alaska. Doing a little research on Megan Lindholm slash Robin Hobb, I found out she went to Lathrop High School in Fairbanks, Alaska. I lived across the street from Lathrop High School in Fairbanks, Alaska. It's the only connection I have to Robin Hobb slash Megan Lindholm is that we both spent some time in Fairbanks, Alaska. One of the things that you're going to find cool about this, though, is this Alaska connection is if you look at her map, because we always talk about the covers, cover illustration, cover design, and maps in the books, if, if, any, if they have them, you'll notice that it's a... Um, it's pretty much a map of Alaska. This is her. This is a map of Alaska turned up backwards and upside down. But um, so her whole elderlings. I think it's the elderlings. There's elder wilds or elderly. I don't know what the the big. All of her books are set in the same universe, and I think it's the elderlings universe. But this is what it looks like. It looks like a backwards Alaska. Just a little information there for you. So this was her first book. This Megan Lindholm, once upon a time, wrote under the name Megan Lindholm, and then she came up with the pseudonym Robin Hobb for this new series, The Assassin's Apprentice. It's a super dope book, one of my favorite fantasies of all time. And I also love it because it's got that gorgeous, gorgeous Michael Whalen painting. And I don't know why they ever re-released re this book with other artwork on it, because this artwork is super fly, super dope. Looks great. Just super. And if you haven't read these books, they're about an assassin's um, apprentice. Pretty much. And it's, and it's really, really well done. One of the best writers of fantasy or just of literature anywhere out there in the world. Robin Hobb. If you've read her stuff, you know what I'm talking about. This lady does great characters, great description. Her prose is beautiful. It's just dripping with atmosphere, and her characters are just so... You just get so immersed in their lives. That's about all I'm going to talk about as far as character and plot. But let's take a look at book two of her Farseer trilogy. This one came out a year after book one, The Assassin's Apprentice. This one was called Royal Assassin, again, with a great, great Michael Whalen painting of our young assassin and his wolf sidekick. I think it's a dog, actually. And then book three rounded out the trilogy with the um, Assassin's Quest, and it came with a Stephen or Paul Ewell cover. I don't know which brother... I don't know which Ewell brother painted that one, but it's cool. It looks good. And together, the trilogy with the original covers looks good. I mean, they match on the shelf. The spines match. If you hold them out together... The um, they all match together, and even even the backsides match. 
So, you know, good job, Bantam Spectra Books, for giving us the first Robin Hobb trilogy in high fashion with great artwork and great cover design. Now let's go to her second trilogy that came out, which was her Live Ship Traders trilogy. And now these, initially, I, ha I used to have the original paperbacks with the Again, they were Stephen or Paul Ewell covers, but when they reissued the paperbacks with different covers, I actually liked the reissue covers this time a little better. I actually really liked them. So let's take a look at the Live Ship Traders. By the way, Live Ship Traders is my favorite trilogy of the Robin Hobb, of the Robin Hobb universe. So let's take a look at book one, The Ship of Magic. One of the things I love about this cover is the the blank space how the illustration sort of bleeds into the white space i just think that's really cool i love that kind of artwork and i think the artist did a really good job and the artist's name is D didier graffit didier graffit did a great job and then book two mad ship book two of the live traders of course another great illustration by the same artist Again, it bleeds down into the white. It looks good together. And then when we get book three, Ship of Destiny, same same thing. And together, they all look just killer. And the spines match. So again, Bantam Spectra, again, knocked it out of the park with the um, second trilogy. Now let's go to her third trilogy that came out, which was the tawny man series beginning with fool's errand and i like these covers too these are once again covers done by either stephen or paul yule um but the tawny man trilogy is sort of a direct sequel to our first trilogy the second trilogy the, the live ship traders was it's set in the same world and got some of the same things going on in it but this is a direct trilogy to our first trilogy. And it stars the same characters. Um, Fool's Errand. This is book number one with the great Paul or Steve Yule cover. Book number two, Golden Fool, another great illustration. And Fool's Fate. And, uh, you know, these these have got the... Uh, they've sort of... The, the, each illustration is sort of framed... In and in, in another illustration of its own, like you can see the the scroll work. I mean, the, the scroll work here, up here. Okay, I can't hold them all like this. You guys know what I'm talking about. Let's lay, let's take a look at them all together. They look super dope on the shelf like that. They all match. Again, the spines all match. And so we've got an, a, another, the third trilogy, it's Bantam Spectra. Again, home run, knocked it out of park. They look super fabulous. And super dope on the shelf. Each trilogy looks different from the other. Now let's go to the um, the next group of books, the next trilogy, which was the Soldier Sun trilogy. Now this was not done by Bantam Spectra. This was actually done by Eos Books. And so we get a mishmash of different sort of spines. So already we're starting off poorly. We're starting off bad already with this trilogy because EOS didn't take the time to match everything up. They just did a shit mix of whatever the fuck they felt like. And uh, so the spines are all goofed up. Great trilogy, though. Each cover, I cannot tell. I think they have the same artist to maybe do each cover. Uh, book one was the... Um, <clears throat> that's book two. Book, book one was the Shaman's Crossing. The illustrator did a good job. Book two was Renegade's Magic. No, that's book three. Book three was Renegade's Magic. I like that cover illustration. Pretty dope. Pretty sharp looking. And then book two was the um, uh, the uh, Forest Mage. Now, let's how, how do these all look together? Yeah, again, it's like it's like kind of it's kind of all over the place. It's it, it's sort of okay just because the illustrator is the same illustrator I'm imagining. But uh, the books are just, you know, it's like a, like I said, no rhyme or reason to them. They kind of 
kind of similar, but not really. So the, it's like they were half-assing it. It's like they're like, let's sort of make it similar, but not. Let's just sort of uh, mail this one in. And uh, they, that's what they got. It's a great trilogy, though. I like it. Um, a very introspective uh, story about a soldier's son. And I think that's why it was called the Soldier Son Trilogy. Let's put those there. Now, her next series of books came in a set of four. And now this was published by Harper Voyager. Now, these all look similar, except for, you know, the green one on the end is just, I mean, these are, you, we got, you know, kind of a earthy tan color, earthy tan color, earthy tan color, a forest green color. It throws it off a little bit, but I'm not going to complain because we've, we're still sort of in the ballpark. We've got the icon here, icon here, icon here. Do, 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 do. I mean, these is the, well, the, the, the fourth one is a little up. Oh, let's admit it. The fourth one is just a, doesn't belong with the others. It's like they, they were, they were going along in a, in a good clip. And then they decided let's, um, fumble the ball to the other team and lose. That's what they did there. However, on the front, you know, book number one, Dragon Keeper. By the way, these books are about dragons. Dragon Keeper. That's a, that's a good, simple illustration. I really like it. Book number two has the same kind of, same kind of a motif. Books three and four, again, they look... So the front, the front covers all look like they belong together. But for some reason, like I said, they decided to just yank the rug out from under us of the spines there. Still, though, still, though, looks like they all belong to the same series. Four book series, the um, Rain Wilds Chronicles. Rain Wilds Chronicles. These are good, too. These are like really good quest novels with dragons. Now let's talk about the last trilogy that she's done, which is part of the assassin uh, part of the uh farseer trilogy and part of the um tawny man trilogy now we've got her um what one is this one called the fits fits and the fool trilogy and so let's take this is again done by del rey and again okay the covers the, the spines they all look dope together that looks like it belongs on on your shelf together the covers the uh this is the first book fool's assassin a bit of a generic cover, but certainly works well. Um, you know, our our assassin from the Assassin's Apprentice is a grown man now in this in this trilogy. And then we've got book number two, the Fool's Quest. Book number three, the um, Assassin's Fate. So we got Fool's Assassin, Fool's Quest, Assassin's Fate together. The covers all match; they look good. As I said before, the spines are all super cool. And just again, if you're uh, if you want some writing advice, if you want to learn how to write some delicious, in-depth, character-driven, world-building driven fantasy that's just beautifully written with absolutely prose that is perfect. Robin Hobb. Robin Hobb. These are some great, great adventure books that really get in depth and in the minds of the characters. Just, they're classics. They are fantasy classics. I love all of these. And we put them all on the shelf together. They look super good. All right there. Can't be happier. Can't be happier, folks.